Okay, thanks for coming. Let me introduce us first. This is Holger, treasurer from Wikimedia Sweden. And I'm Manuel, uh, technically uh, helping Wikimedia Austria and Switzerland. And this talk is about CVCRM, uh, contact management system, donation management system, which is open source and has been developed for NGOs like Wikimedia. We've been using it for a while now and have done some amendments to it, not directly to CVCRM. CVCRM is basically a module which you can install on top of Drupal, Joomla, or WordPress. So you can choose your favorite CMS system and then add CVCRM, which adds these special features. And uh, we've been working on Drupal modules to make it easier to integrate a donation system into your website, to allow membership sign up on your website, or to give real-time financial reports for the public or your members. Yeah. Um, how many of you are using CVCM right now in chapters? Nobody. Okay, so in the beginning I thought we will give some, some point out some functions that are quite useful for chapters and then go more into how we are using it. Um, the first function I want to point out is a smart groups actually, very useful thing. Um, so oh yeah. Anybody of you has some experience with CRM systems at all? Okay, well. Should we explain it a bit more what CRM actually means? Because CRM is basically a, a generic technical term like wiki, which means a type of software. So CRM actually means customer relationship management. So as you see, this is something from the business world. But um, basically, you can call it a contact management system. So you have your addresses somewhere in a database, and you have all the communications cons regarding a certain address also in the same database. So whenever you are communicating with somebody, you the first thing you do is you create a, the, the contact in your database and then use the system to communicate with that person. And if that person, for instance, makes a phone call, you make a note in the system. This person has called me, we talked about that. So within an association, it becomes transparent what communications you had with which persons or companies or other entities you're working with. And CVCRM has that. The Holger will show us smart groups, so we can use this, for instance, for uh, membership mailings things like that. And uh, CVCRM has some special features we will show later, for instance, for uh, financial accounting, donation management, and so on. Yeah, I will not show the whole process of creating a mailing, um, but the first process is getting the right members in a virtual group in the system, and then you can send a mailing to this group. And this is where you start with a search. And CVCRM has, a very, has an advanced search where you can put tons of parameters. Um, in the database, you have the information about members, when they became member, where they live, um, how much they donated, um, where they work, maybe at some museum or whatever. And um, for example, one very useful thing is um, searching for addresses. So I can put in six, nine, a zip code and say then, okay, within 0 0.5 miles around this zip code, I want to have all members, and it should just be one member right now, hopefully. No, okay, well, there's a company also. And um, in principle, I could go back and say, okay, just members and not companies, or just real persons, and um, I can select all of these records and put them into a new smart group. And the smart group is always updated, so, um, and this is very useful if somebody wants to create some event in some city and wants to announce it to all the contacts uh, that you have. Like you are organizing a photo hunt somewhere in a village and you want to maybe invite all people 50 kilometers around it. And it's a very useful thing to have. 
Um, so, maybe you want to say something about events. Ah, oh, Wiki Wiki. Okay, well, this is not this is another module we programmed. Um, like actually, the first one I present. Um, usually in Drupal, you have to write HTML code, and you cannot easily put image there. So we we wrote some plugin that you can put media wiki code directly there. So you have the advantage that you can put files from comments directly. You don't need to learn uh, HTML if you don't know. Because syntax may be a little bit easier. And the main advantage, um, this takes us first through a, a wiki that you can select. And um, right now we have this text is going to a wiki of Wikimedia Sweden. So you can also just put a template or a link to uh, pages there. Um, like the statutes of the association, so you just have them in the wiki, and then they appear also in Drupal you, without having them in Drupal, actually, but they are uh, catched from the uh, wiki. Yeah, actually, we use what, what he just showed us, uh, we use this, this quite a lot in Wikimedia Austria because we have a members wiki where we have the bylaws or uh, an updated project list what projects we are working on, who is responsible for them, what's the current status, with links to sub-pages where all the details on the projects are. And we want to have this information as well on our website, of course, on our public website, but we want, don't want to replicate all the content. So we just make a, 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 a Drupal page, projects, and then we add the curly brackets, projects, and just transclude the content from the wiki as a template into our Drupal website. So we don't need to update our Drupal website anymore. Um, now we're talking about uh, events. This is another functionality of CVCRM. Uh, we are using it in Wikimedia Austria right now for our very first time, actually. Yeah, a question? Generally at the end. Okay, internet is down. Uh, hmm? Yeah, no problem. Well, um, so with CV event, you can create an event in inside CVCRM. You will have a sign up page where people can sign up. You can create price lists for certain features of your event. For instance, we are using this now for the regular event fee. Everyone has to pay, and then people can add uh, accommodation single room, double room, or free accommodation, or no accommodation, whatever they like to do, uh, things like that. So you have e-commerce built in? Pardon? You have e-commerce built in? Uh, basically, yes, uh, but um, we don't use this right now in the CV event, because the CVCRM itself has payment instruments built in, but we found out that they are not useful for us for the donations. That's why we built some Drupal modules and actually have our own payment instruments. By the way, all the code we are talking about, these Drupal modules, they are all up on the Wikimedia Foundation code repository. So you can, when you have Subversion or a Git, you can just get the code from there. Uh, always the latest code, so we work directly there and allow people to, to add more payment instruments, for instance, on other, um, for, yeah. For instance, uh, we are now just implementing it in Switzerland. We need, we need new payment instruments for Switzerland, so we will add them. It's modularized, and uh, yeah, we hope that many chapters will be interested in working with, with this to add more features to make it better for everyone who's working on it. Um, yeah, unfortunately, there's not much to show about this <laughs> event right now. Um, what, what do you need to run Drupal on your server? Uh, you will need uh, a Linux server. Well, not necessarily Linux, but uh, you need a server which supports Apache and has an, a PHP and has an, a MySQL server. So ba that's basically the same requirements than running MediaWiki. So if you run MediaWiki on your server, then you can run Drupal and CBCRM as well. Um, Which would be faster? Hmm? Which would be performance-wise, which is faster, MediaWiki or Drupal on the same box? 
I would say media wiki, but the, 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 the comparison is, uh, I mean, these are completely two different things. I mean, media wiki doesn't have the features Drupal right, has. Drupal and wants more resources and stuff, and sucks up resources more so than media There is much more functionality in there, so <laughs> yeah, of course it's lower. Um, could, could you show the meta page maybe? If we have internet? The, there is on Meta, there is a page called CVCRM, and where we started to put together information about the project. So what CVCRM is, um, you see we started writing uh, a handbook. There is the Wikimedia modules page, just here, uh, which describes all the modules we have created and what they actually do. And there's still some documentation to be added in how to install and set up everything, but we're getting there. Uh. Yeah, let's try to continue and show you some more things that you can do. Um, CVSM also has a very powerful tool which is called um, Activities. Oh, where is it? Here. So you can, in principle, create a new activity like this. And then you can assign it to somebody. So you can design, there's a meeting with some persons, and some other persons are have the responsibility to organize it. Can, yeah, you can give them also tasks or whatever. Um, they get reminder emails and so on. And um, the problem right now is this stuff is just in CVSM. So I started to write some module that exports the stuff into. Uh, uh, into Google Calendar, iCal format. So, in the end, you will get some URL um, which you can add to Google Calendar simply by clicking on um, by URL and you paste it here and it shows up in your calendar. The main problem with this converter right now is that Google is just updating this stuff once a day. There's a cache in between and so it's not very useful. Um, I tried to look into the Google API to uh, instead of getting it by URL, but um, I didn't manage to get the authentication there running. So if anybody knows how to work with the Google API, I am looking for help. Um, oh, that's one function. Um, the next thing Manuel said that we started to rewrite stuff, uh, or made some nice interfaces for donations and so on. Um, CVCM itself has forms that can be used, but they don't look very nice. So what we wanted to have are uh, very customizable ones that we can put everywhere on the page where we want, where we can remove some fields or add some fields and so on uh, during fundraising testing. And that's why we started with these modules. And um, if somebody is doing a donation here, they're ending up directly in the system and in the bookkeeping. And um, I guess bookkeeping is what most of the people here may be interested in, at least what we heard so far. And um, I want to show a little bit how we do it. Um, in CVCM, you can add contributions to each contact. It should do like this. So, and each contribution has a lot of parameters. So first, you can have a contact. Yeah, this can be an organization where you buy something, a company where you buy a camera. Um, then you can select some account where you want to put it on which project. So if you buy a camera, we want to put it on the technique pool. So then you put the amount, and if you buy something for 50,000 kroners, you put it like this. Then you put some comment what it is. You put the day when they receive the money, the day when you get the receipt, um, some transaction ID, and the account, what you paid it, if you took the credit card, or if you took the geo account, or whatever. You can also add the invoice there, and then you save it, and then you have it. And um, if you do this a lot, <coughs> then you can also do some nice um, analysis of the data in the end. So you can create nice pie charts of where your money in the chapter goes on which projects. So you see there's a, little, a lot of European awareness, technical, rent of local, personal costs, whatever. You can look how your members develop under the year. And then you can look much more detail. So if you look, for example, on the technical account here, and I have to zoom out a lot. Well, it loads. 
I need to jump to the thing. Um, yeah. Okay. Then you have all transactions here. So we bought the uh, camera and this the and the tripod from camera doctor on this day with this amount. And you click here, and you are supposed to get the invoice. Sorry, I have it. Um, so then you have the overview of each project, how many money, how much money you have there. You see how much money was in the budget there, how many working hours are supposed to be there. On this project, we did 10 working hours from volunteers, about 50 working hours from employees for maintaining the technique pool this year on Wikimedia Sweden. And you can also put everything in the table where you see, okay, this was a budget, this amount, this is the amount that is right now in progress. So if we are buying something, we put already the transaction to CiviSAM and say the, stat the status of the payment is, uh, is planned. Um, if we finally get the invoice, we put it as in progress and pay the amount, and if it is paid, we set it to uh, completed, and then it switches to the other column. So, and this is basically the live version of our audit our fi final audit of the year. And um, this one is publicly available. Here we have a full one containing all the data, but we have a, we made a public one which contains the basic, basically the same data here for 2011, 2012. But we anonymized the stuff, so all the single names of individual persons are hidden, but companies are still shown. So. It's quite transparent, everybody can see what we have there. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, so <clears throat> what you have seen now was a mixture of uh, core functionality of CVCRM and functionality we have added. So the, the, the functionality to actually put in contributions is a core functionality that we use this for accounting is kind of an abuse of the contributions in CVCRM. Uh, this uh, auditing thing is a Drupal module Olga has developed, which basically just goes through the database and makes a nice report. And um, yeah, by the way, uh, for those who might ask, um, Folger showed us two versions of the of the report, an, an a public and a full version with the links going directly to the relevant contributions. In CVCRM, it's very easy um, to set up the the privileges. So you can say the public is can be viewed by everyone by uh, anonymous users, while the full report can only be. Uh, used by a certain group of users, for instance, board users or something like that. So you don't have to worry that uh, you will uh, show your all the names in the public. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, let's move on a bit, little bit into the uh, direction of development and so on. Right? You want to show something? I have one more thing to show. Another thing now that we have employees, we want to uh, keep track a little bit um, on which projects we spend our efforts. So I wrote some locking tools so where you can select. Um, okay, I should change to somebody that actually is an employee. Um, where you can select for each project how much time on, on the day I was spending on this project as a volunteer or as an employee. And um, each employee has a certain amount of um, hours budgeted for each project where you're supposed to work on. Um, we got a report of how many hours everybody was working where and um, the details what the person was doing in which week or in which day. Um, this, um, I think some, I want to say also some negative issues of the system right now and um, it's very hard to maintain. Um, you really needed somebody that spends some hours a week on maintaining stuff, putting security up to six and bugs and so on. There yeah, tons of, of open bugs uh, also. I think right now I have about 15 open bugs on CVCM that are not yet fixed, and some of them are really causing data loss if you are not carefully. Um, the second thing is um, we are using, or is privacy law. Um, how many information are you allowed to store about people in the database? Um, this is something we are figuring out right now. Um, Swedish law dis distinguishes between structurized data and non-structured data. 
So if you put in the database, I have a meeting with uh, somebody as a text field, it's fine. If you connect it with the data set of this person, it's probably not fine. Um, and the third thing is um, we are doing the bookkeeping with it. This means we have to follow some legal restrictions with it. The Swedish law is quite um, relaxed when it comes to bookkeeping. Most of the regulations there are from good practice. And um, our auditors from KPMG themselves are not really sure um, what rules we have to follow there. Or Well, one main rule is you are not allowed to edit um, old bookkeepings. Um, but in each digital system, if you are an administrator, you can always edit the stuff, even if the end users may not be able to do it. So um, how do you have to do it uh, to do it right? Um, these are questions that we are trying to figure out right now. Um, you want to say something? Last words? Yeah, um, actually, I wanted to give time for some questions. But, um, <laughs> Uh, well, I think the most important URL you should remember, if you are now interested, is uh, the meta page, CBCRM on the meta wiki. Uh, we have some information there. If you don't find what you need, please contact us. I think our uh, contact information. Yeah, there there is a list of. Um, blah, 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 blah. Well, first of all, the session right now it's linked here as well so you find our names there and contact information but there is also a list of uh, users somewhere I'm looking for ah chapters using CVCRM and prospects so you can see who is using CVCRM and what they are they doing with, with it and there are also names so you have people to contact so please contact us we are happy to put more stuff here. I'm right now implementing this for Wikimedia CH and I'm using this as a test case to m take some screenshots on how I do the installation and so on. This, so this will come in the next few weeks. I just did the basic installation there, which is just adding Drupal plus CVCRM and now we're going on adding all the special Wikimedia modules which have been described on, on this uh, sub page we showed you before. I think yeah, if we have time for questions, please. Okay, I'm Christian from Wikimedia Italia. Uh, we also use uh, CVCRM and uh, we also have uh, a wiki for our members, which is currently our main website, but we are going to change it to a Drupal website uh, with CVCRM uh, on the back, e the back end. And uh, I wanted to ask, when you register a new member, uh, currently we uh, grant them the access on our wiki. Uh -huh. And we would like to, um, and also we put, it, uh, put him on, the, on CVCRM. Mm -hmm. sure. we, would, we would like to know if it's possible to do uh, these things only one time. You put the contact in the CVCRM, and you also grant access to the wiki. I started to write a module synchronizing users between CVCRM, or members actually, and our wiki, since just members are allowed to edit the, mem the wiki. And um, it's a quite boring task to compare if they are still in them or not. So I made, it's not yet much functional, but it just, it just shows the table right now and matches users that you can manually edit. But um, I'm planning to work a little bit more on this. Okay, There's just one more question. Because the point is that our website uh, will be uh, edited only by very few people, and the CVCRM by even maybe less people, like the staff uh, and the board, and but the wiki by every member of the association. So uh, as far wh wh the last time I, I looked, uh, I I thought it was kind of difficult to you know, teach Drupal who had the right permission. To do what? Oh yes. Um, but um, I don't know if, if your question for points towards this module that we are taking wiki contents into the Drupal. Um, you can always lock down pages on uh, on the wiki. I mean, our our statutes of our association. Not everybody can edit them. It's just administrators. So this is how we solve this problem. Uh, I think his question was also in. You don't want to sync Drupal users with the wiki. 
but you want to sing members we have in the Drupal database, and that's or in the CDCR database, and that's what he's actually doing. So he's not looking at the, the users of the Drupal installation, but he's looking for contacts in CDCR which are currently member. Uh, we actually didn't show that, but believe it to us, uh, we don't have the time for to show it. But actually, every contact has an can have one or even several membership records and they so CVCR keeps track on who has to pay membership fee and so on, creates automatically the contribution and that stuff. And we have an we have a module to integrate into the website so people can sign up as a new member on the website. So it will create automatically the contact, the payment, it uses our donation system so the the new member can also directly uh, pay the membership fee and what we i never use but i think you are using it productively i'm not sure the, the special links you send out uh, once a year saying hey you, you have to renew your membership please click on this link there's a special anonymized hash in the link so they click on it they come to their own to a website with their own details so it can update the address and pay the membership fee for the upcoming year. Are there other questions? Oh. Hi, I'm Sandra from Wikimedia Netherlands. I have a question. So from the moment you first installed CVCRM till the moment you really thought, okay, this is functioning the way we want it to function, how much time did you have to invest? <laughs> well, uh, it, it's hard to, to say because, well, I did it in Austria when most of the concepts at least were there because Holger was thinking about it, but still some development had to be done, which is now already available. And I think it took us half a year around, roughly, until we went live. It took us half a year, but we had two meetings with bringing people from Austria and Sweden to Germany for a hackathon. Uh, so, so two weekend meetings with three people working on it. And that is not, ne not necessary today anymore, uh, except for payment instruments, which we might need to adapt. And, and were you all familiar with Drupal before you started the project? No. Not at all, at least me. <laughs> Uh, if I can add another thing, uh, Wikimedia Italia has paid a developer to uh, develop a payment interface with uh, uh, IW Smile account, which is a, an online credit card method of payment. Mm -hmm. So I think we could share the code uh, and we could make, make it available for all chapters who might be interested. That would be really cool. We have, by the way, a PayPal interface, and we are going. I'm going to adapt this to Post Finance, which is a very special Swiss thing. It's a Swiss post banking system uh, to allow us to also use that for credit cards. But uh, what I wanted to say is that the, the concept is basically it's very similar. You have to create. You have to go to a special URL. You have to create special hashes from. The, the amounts and the name of the person who wants to pay and, and, and forward all that to a special URL and then it comes back to another URL and from, from, the, from the exit code you can see if the uh, payment was successful or not. So basically, uh, most systems work like this, so you can copy the PayPal code and just adapt it a bit. It's not so much work. Any other questions from the audience? Raise your hand. Okay. Well, let's give our presenters a round of applause. Part of my Twitter account, if you go to that, the, 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 these slides and the, the presentation are basically linked from there. This is my last tweet. Um, and I'm going to be talking about this website. Um, so I, I wanted to start by saying thank you to the conference organizers for accepting my talk proposal. Uh, I'm excited to be here at my first Wikimedia conference, Wikimania conference, and I hope that it will be the first of many. Um, similar to millions of other people around the world, I use Wikipedia every day at work and at home, and in the last 
three years, I've sort of eased into editing a little bit. I'm by no means a, a heavy editor of, of Wikipedia. Um, but I, I tend to focus on libraries and archives and a little bit of uh, music articles. Um, I, when I first started editing Wikipedia, um, I heard horror stories of people having their work reverted, deleted. So I was careful to cite materials in my edits. And I was pleasantly surprised when editors swooped in not to delete my work, but to improve it. So I want to say thanks to all of you for creating such an improbably open and alive community. I know there's room for improvement, as we heard in the the, uh, uh, it's not the plenary, it's the opposite of the plenary, uh, the keynote, thank you, um, this morning. There's room for improvement, but it's a pretty amazing thing that you all have built. And really, this is all my talk about Wikipedia is about. Uh, Wikistream, or sorry, about Wikistream is about. Wikistream was born out of a desire to share just how amazing this community is and with people who didn't know it already. Um, and. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, uh, and I'm speaking the technology and infra infrastructure track. Uh, so I promise to get to some details of how Wikistream works. But really, there's nothing that new in Wikistream. Um, and really, this talk probably belongs more on the glam side of things, the galleries, libraries, archives, and museums track. Or if there was a performance art track, it might belong on there, uh, but there isn't one. Um, but if you're a multitasker, I encourage you to bring up, and, and the Wi-Fi connection works, bring up this site in your browser, uh, try to make sense of it uh, as I'm talking, and um, uh, we'll see what breaks first, the app or uh, uh, the Wi-Fi, well, although the Wi-Fi might be broken already. Um, so a little bit of background. Um, uh, a couple years ago, I was attending the DevAD conference in London and dropped into this uh, link data meetup that was going on nearby. And part of the program uh, included presentations from Tom Scott and Silver Oliver and Georgi Kovalarov about some work that they did at the BBC. Uh, they demoed two web applications, <laughs> the BBC uh, Wildlife Finder and BBC Music that use Wikipedia as a content management platform. And so this is actually an example of something they did this is a page in the Wildlife Finder for uh, the blue whale. And uh, that, if you scroll down to the bottom of it, you'll see there's a section about, called about, uh, and it has a, a chunk of text about the blue whale uh, with some uh, stuff at the bottom um, about how it comes from Wikipedia. And, and uh, so the, the text here is basically the same as the text, uh, the first three paragraphs of the, of the article. Uh, similarly, their uh, their music site, uh, BBC Music, uh, they have uh, a little biography section on the artist, and similarly, they have links to Wikipedia, and this text is the same as you know the text that's on Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to try to do a video here um, while. So what I learned from uh, Georgie is that uh, all these, uh, the way that they uh, integrated BBC with Wikipedia, uh, with Wikipedia was they, um, they wrote a bot that sits in, a, in the IRC chat room uh, at Wikimedia for uh, English Wikipedia. And they, all the uh, edits are basically announced in this chat room. So this is just the uh, IRSSI uh, client joining this channel. And once it joins, you'll see that you know, all these edits start going by. Um, so, yeah, they, this kind of blew my mind a little bit. Uh, and uh, the crazy thing is that there are 730 other of these channels, right, for all the Wikipedia properties, which is similarly crazy. Um, so uh, to explain why uh, this kind of resonated with me, I, I need to back up a little bit more. Um, I work as a software developer at the Library of Congress, and um, in developing web applications there, I often end up using data about books, people, and topics that have been curated for hundreds of years, and which began to be made available in electronic form in the early 1970s. Uh, the library community has had a long-standing obsession with collaboration or uh, crowdsourcing um, to maintain its information about the bibliographic universe, so information about books, um, and librarians would most likely call it cooperative cataloging instead of crowdsourcing, but the idea for me is roughly the same. Um, 
So as early as 1850, Charles Jewett proposed to the Smithsonian be established as the National Library of the United States. It wasn't the first National Library, but it was the first, this first effort here in the United States. Um, and one of the things they wanted to do was collect all the catalogs from libraries around the country in, in one place. Um, and the Smithsonian uh, d decided not to do it, and, and the Library of Congress ended up fulfilling its role in, uh, in the late 1890s. Um, and, but what, what they did was when they, when they uh, let's see if I can move on here. When they, what, when they started uh, with the copyright offices in the Library of Congress, so they, uh, they cataloged, basically whenever something got copyrighted, it got shipped to the Library of Congress and they had this army of catalogers that would basically catalog the book. And they had this program, this is a picture from the, the, uh, the uh, well it's now called the Cataloging Distribution Service, but they, they, uh, they basically shipped out cards all around the country so that the item could be cataloged in one place rather than, uh, rather than individually all the, all the libraries that had the book. Um, and, um, and in, in the 19, uh, sorry, 1971, um, this guy Fred Kilgore at OCLC, uh, they, he had this idea of a, um, a shared database. So rather than all the cataloging just happening at the Library of Congress, why not have a database where anybody can, base, any, any participating institution can contribute a catalog record. So, so now, so this is the sort of the idea of sort of crowdsourcing, how it sort of fits into the library world a little bit. Um, uh, this worked for a little bit, but then uh, the web happened. And as the web began to spread in the mid uh, to late 1990s, the, cat the library community got it into their head that they would catalog the web with efforts like the Cooperative Online Resource Catalog. But the web was growing too fast, and there weren't enough catalogers who cared, and the tools weren't up to the task, so the project died. So when I saw Tom, Silver, and Georgie present on the use of Wikipedia, Wikipedia as a curated content platform at the BBC, I saw how active the community was, and I had sort of a little bit of a light bulb moment uh, where um, you know libraries still can do uh, the work that they do, um, but sort of in more of a cooperative role with Wikipedia. Um, and so th th that's what they, the, uh, these three guys, what they were talking about with the BBC, BBC is in a similar situation to a lot of cultural heritage organizations where they're trying to find their way on the internet, right, and on the web. Um, so anyway, that's that's how Wikistream came about. I wanted to, to show what that basically that IRC chat room, but in a more friendly way, so that uh, uh, people that didn't know how to connect to IRC could see it. Um, I don't know. Has anybody been able to bring it up to see if it's working or not? It's uh, working. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, I created this app, right, and I put it out there, and then I got this email from Ward Cunningham, who's uh, He's like a personal hero of mine, and he wrote this really nice email saying, thank you for doing this. I tried to do this several years ago, and like I, I, I couldn't do it. And uh, and it, it really made my day, I mean, it made more than my day, it made like, you know, kind of my career to get this email. Um, but the, the, the thing is, so it wasn't really a new idea. Other people had tried to do this before, and I was just lucky enough to, um, to wander across the idea of when uh, some of the tooling around streaming to the browser was a lot had improved or it made it easy enough for me to do it. Um, and so um, so the, the library that I ended up using is this thing called Socket.io. Uh, and Socket.io is a JavaScript library that, that lets you easily stream data to the browser without needing to care about the transport mechanisms that the browser supports, be they WebSocket, Adobe FlashSocket, Ajax long polling, Ajax multi-part streaming, Forever iframe, JSON p-polling, all these things. It auto detects the capabilities of the browser and the server, and then gives you a simple callback API for publishing and consuming events. So here's a little bit of code that runs in the client, so in the browser side. Um, it's, you can see a bit of jQuery here, right? That, uh, you know, when the, do when the document is loaded, it instantiates one of these socket IO things and adds it, um, oh, and, and listens for an event. Basically, so on a message event, it calls this callback add update, which is a function that I wrote that basically updates the DOM. And that's basically it on the client side. On the server side, uh, so Socket.io is 
designed to run with Node. Node. Uh, I don't know. Has anybody heard of Node before? Okay, a handful of people. Um, that's actually good because there's so much hype around Node that like it, it, it's sometimes a little bit too much. Um, but uh, but basically, what this is, Node is basically uh, it's the V8 Google's V8 engine, uh, JavaScript engine that they've written sort of programming in uh, environment for it. And, uh, and in this case, Socket.io uses uh, the Express web framework. Um, and you basically just load the library and add it to the server that you create. Um, and then the only little thing that I had to do was I had to um, sort of listen to the IRC channel. So it listens currently to 39 of the, the major language Wikipedia channels. And um, and basically just uh, I, I wrote a, a little library called Wiki Changes, which um, if you are a Node user, you can basically npm install Wiki Changes, and you get a little library that basically does the business of connecting to the IRC chat and, and parsing the messages uh, into a friendly uh, JSON format or JavaScript uh, object. So that's the thing that get, kind of gets passed around all the way from the the uh, you know the, the server back to the client, um, and it, you probably I don't know how much of that you can see back there, but there's you know there's a bunch of li little kind of interesting snippets of information like the, the article, uh, you know the, the page is being edited, uh, the channel that it's on, uh, its URL, the user that's making the edit, whether it's unpatrolled, whether it's made by a robot, uh, whether you know the user's anonymous. Um, what namespace the, the, the edit was made in, stuff like that. Uh, so, and then when I did this wiki stream thing, it kind of like was strangely addictive. Uh, and so I kind of found myself wanting to create some other little apps that did similar things. Um, so Wiki Pulse is uh, basically a, I don't know if I can show, maybe I'll show this. Um, Actually, I, I should probably just, uh, how much time is left? It's got yeah, about seven minutes. Seven minutes, okay. Um, well, uh, let me just describe these, I guess, then. So Wikipulse is basically, when you go to it, it's, it's basically a page. This is, wasn't my idea, it was this guy, Dario, uh, I can't remember his last name. He's a, with the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and he, uh, he wanted to have a page that sort of shows all the Wikipedias and little meters and stuff that shows how much they're actively being edited right now. So, um, and then Wiki Tweets was it's so, somewhat related in that I basically wanted to show it really uses the, the Twitter API more, uh, the streaming API. So it listens to the, the stream of twi tweets that are coming out of Twitter and sort of everyone that references Wikipedia, it shows you it on the screen as it goes by. Um, and then Wikibeat uh, is something that. Um, uh, my friend Dan Chudnoff, sitting right there, uh, created that it uses the Wiki Pulse uh, data stream to, um, and Dan can probably describe it, and he might even be able, uh, willing to play uh, some of the play the music. But it, uh, so he basically created like a, an audio interpretation of the of the stream uh, with his friend uh, Chris uh, Brown, is it Burns, Burns um, who's a who's a, a electronic artist. So. If we, maybe we will have a bit of time in a moment, I can return to that. Um, and I, if, I mean, there's very few Node people in the room, so I, I do have a little video of sort of installing Node and then installing the Wikistream library and then using it just to print out the articles. I mean, does anybody want to see that? Oh. Yeah? Okay. Do it! All right, well, <laughs> five minutes, okay. I mean, you probably, I mean, it's it's probably going to be kind of... Awesome? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and that's what all the note people say, right? It's like, it's awesome. Um, so I, I created a, a blank Ubuntu instance on EC2 uh, yesterday and just sort of took this video as it's app getting, app get installing Node.js and NPM, which is what you need. And you can see all those. This was, uh, 
Yeah, it's not really relevant. Yeah, this was the latest Ubuntu, so was it? I always get the version of Swallow uh, Tool. Yeah? Oh, that's the Linux kernel? or? Uh, oh, no. Swallow 4, yeah. Um, you can see it's uh, churning away a little bit, it's sort of doing something, unpacking libc6 development <laughs> library. Um, so this is just getting Node installed, right? And, and NPM. Uh, So the idea for creating this Wikistream library was that if other of you have ideas, the ways that you want to use the stream, uh, it's basically, it potentially could just be a way of bootstrapping a, a quick idea. So if you have an idea for using the stream in some way, um, the idea is that this could make it a little bit easier potentially. Maybe there's other easier ways of doing it. But um, And so here I'm installing the wiki changes library that I created using NPM. Kind of unfortunate because all the action is happening down right at the bottom, so you really probably can't see it back there. And then you can see some of the dependencies that you know Wiki uh, the Wiki Changes has, right? The uh, underscore library and IRC JS, which is a I IRC library for JavaScript. Um, and then finally, I'm going to open up VI. I'm going to edit a file called changes.js and I'm going to load the wiki changes library and I'm going to instantiate an instance of the wiki changes object thingy. It's a technical term thingy, I think. And then I'm going to listen basically to the stream, giving it a callback. And the callback is given a change, that JavaScript object that we looked at. Yeah, I'm going to close the door. And then um, uh, I'm going to log basically to the console, the, the article title, or the page title. And here I'm just sort of showing you when you did the npm install Wikistream, it basically creates a little directory local to that directory called node modules and puts the library in there. And so here I'm just running it, so node changes.js. Uh, and once it connects to the IRC channels, which takes a few seconds normally, then you start seeing stuff stream by, right? And so I didn't actually show you Wikistream at all, uh, which uh, I didn't totally intend to do. I, do you want me to, there's probably not enough time now, but I can, yeah, like I said, the. Um, the network is such in here that it may have a bit of trouble because it, it's actually very, uh, you know, it uses it basically, well, depending on the browser, which browser is it? Oh, Chromium. Mean, so this actually will use a WebSocket, so it'll make one connection to the server and then stuff the streams back. Um, and you can filter it basically, like it, let's say you only want uh, the uh, German uh, Wikipedia, um, we can li limit to just those. Um, uh, normally, the German would. I, probably everybody's here, right? Listening to this talk. But, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, or you can. Uh, what's that? That's time shift. Yeah. Yeah. But even even in the middle, of, like it's it's crazy when you watch it. Just like, yeah. Well, it's. I mean, it's definitely busier during the day, but yeah. And the other thing it does is it looks at the media comments, so uh, or the comments, right? So when people upload images there, it will sort of set the background to whatever that image was. Um, it doesn't do it for all images because some are very large and it kind of frees the browser up. And it's kind of instructive too because sometimes you get, uh, you know, you see what people are uploading. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, Dan. Uh, you have your app running with Wiki Pulse. 
there an audio in? Yeah, well, we could just put the microphone next to your laptop. Could we do that if that's uh, the, sure. the low tech method? There is also a cable down here. Uh, oh, yeah, there is an audio cable right here. It actually goes really well with that. It's kind of picking up speed because I'm running wiki full separately and it takes a while to get the rate of changes up to full speed. You can hear it picking up speed. What did you build it with again? That was the it's, uh, it's an, a free software package called Pure Data. And then actually Chris Burns wrote it. Um, I just fed him data from you. Yeah. What the data broke is. I don't know if you guys can hear that at all. In, in the pitch, in which, which language is coming from? Yeah, um, if you really want to look at it, I encourage you to look at the, um, yeah, look for Edge Code and GitHub. He sent the links uh, in his slides. Uh, and it's a free data app you can download and look at yourself. Uh, but it does, there are three different modes, and the one we're listening to now sets the, the tempo based on the rate of changes per each one. And it sets the um, pitch based on uh, sort of the inverse rate. So the highest updates have the lowest speed. So you can hear down low. I don't know if you can hear bump, 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 bump. That's English. Uh, and the higher pitch ones have the most frequent ones. Those are the less frequent ones. Okay. Sounds like a horror film. On that note. Well, on that note, are there questions from the audience? Yes. I'm looking at the tool now, and I see those pictures in the background. Yeah. You said that they were pictures from Commons that were just uploaded? Yeah, they should be. Uh, could it be possible to add the link in the tool? Because it doesn't respect that. the license from the picture. Uh, oh, no. what I mean, <laughs> I can't hurt there, but <laughs> if my picture were going there, I'd like so to. So do people, to I mean, I'm not totally familiar with the Commons. So do people upload content to the Commons that they don't want shown on the web? No, you it's not that, but you have the license to respect. <coughs> and oh, one way to do it would be to yeah, yeah, I couldn't put, figure out where to do it. Like, but I could, I could put a link up there somewhere. Just yeah, that's a good idea. Or Thank the you. name, or the name, or the name of the user who uploaded it. Okay. There, there's a session this afternoon on the legal consequences of Commons, so come back to the stream this afternoon. <laughs> okay, we'll do it. Sure. <laughs> just a little feature already that might uh, link with uh, the, the legal issue. Um, uh, I, I, I was using this a few times in the past few months, and it would be nice to s um, sometimes I see an image and it goes by real quick, and I want to get back to it. Yeah. So it would be nice maybe to put a little cue somewhere about the last 10, I don't know, uh, and that would solve the issue at the same time. Yeah, I forgot that. I mean, there is a pause, so if you oh, press okay. P, it'll stop. All right. But That's nice. I didn't yeah, know that. but it'd be nice to reverse it, like to go back or something. But I can still pause it, so all right, that's yeah. good. I didn't know that. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, next question? <coughs> Anyone? Other questions? Yeah, I should probably add, like, are there any people here that work in, like, libraries, archives, museums kind of thing? Okay, so it's more. <laughs> the reason why I created this was to show at, like, conferences and things. So when people want to understand, you know, how much people use Wikipedia, uh, I th showing this, I think, sort of, sort of makes them think, oh, wow, there's all these people that are actively sort of Fixing it. It, it. I mean, I know for all you uh, Wikipedians, you know, like, you know, it's, it's the air you breathe and it's not anything new. But, but for people coming from the cultural heritage sector that have had a history of sort of developing their own kind of data sets and stuff like that, it's, it's kind of eye opening. Yeah. Are you the same person? I'm sorry, someone else, but I was talking to someone who linked, sorry. Um, sent me where all the, my museum was linked and Wikipedia, and then I was able to, that was very useful. Oh yeah, yeah, the link, Wikipedia? Yeah. Yeah, that was me. That was yeah. So we've been in touch email, so thank you. Oh, that welcome. helped, that really did, that was great. Yeah, cool. Could, yeah. could I could I ask whether the, the guy that, that has the widget presentation is in the room? Did he ever show up? No? Okay. Yeah, and he was moved, he was moved to like the other yeah. tech track or something. I, oh. I, I noticed on the wiki, it kind of, Okay, uh, but we had another question on this side. Uh, someone raised their hand before? No? Okay. Uh, well, we, we, have, uh, we have a few spare minutes. Do you, do you want to um, tell us a little bit more about uh, anything you think you've learned from, from these, these visualizations that you've done? Uh, well, you know, one of the things I, I wanted to mention that I learned was, um, 
So when I got it, when I got this idea, I really wanted, I put a ticket into the, I think it was the MediaWiki uh, ticketing system. Actually, I didn't put the ticket in there. I just, I noticed there was a ticket for XMPP support in Wikimedia, or in, yeah, Wikimedia, right? Or MediaWiki. Um, and, uh, and so XMPP is a protocol for streaming. Um, and I was like, sort of being a purist, I was like, you know, it'd be really nice if, you know, rather than putting the updates into IRC, it went into an actual, like, stream and that I could. But then, so that was the thing that I learned about this community is it's very sort of uh, practical uh, and sort of people weren't really necessarily interested in the sort of purity of publishing an XMPP stream when they had the IRC stream working. And there were already, if you go into this, these chat rooms, there's all these bots that are doing stuff for the community uh, sitting in there doing stuff. So that was the thing that I learned sort of just to be, um, to, to not try to sort of like push this uh, XMPP boulder up the hill, you know, try to get everybody to, you know, install some plugin. It was just like sort of work with what's there and um, it was kind of refreshing. Yes. Yes. Uh, I Two years ago in uh, Wikimedia in Nashville, uh, there was uh, a movie which was about a Wikipedia story which was called Trophy Numbers. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you have uh, seen it. Uh, anyway, it uh, had uh, these uh, you know, uh, scenes where it showed the images of the diff not the screen, the, the difference, oh, yeah. which, which changed over time. Yeah. And I think as a future, as a future proposal, if you could, uh, you know, do something like yeah, that using your frame. One thing I didn't mention, it's kind of hard to see on the screen here, but you see these numbers that are over here? That's the size of the dip, basically. So a negative number is like people removing text and then a positive one is like people adding. Um, and then if you, if you actually end up clicking on one of these things, it, it actually takes you to the dip. So, um, so you can see like what it was to change, but but yeah, I imagine this. What was it called again? It was the, the thing you were the project. The the, the, the movie or was the called the trophy numbers. Yeah, question mark. But it showed exactly this image, which changed over time. Uh -huh. So you you could see directly the the the, the the change that was made to the page. Oh, cool. Okay. So it took they took. Obviously, it was a movie, so it was uh, done in a lot of time. Uh, I, I think. Yeah, but yeah, they ah. took this image and uh, you know, like put it like a stream, and so uh, it could be an idea out. for the next more more visual uh, version of the stream. Okay, thank you. You're thinking about making it look like Star Wars. Oh, you bring back that music that guy was making. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did have it fade sort of near the bottom, like it sort of. But yeah, it, it could definitely be improved. It's on GitHub if you if you have. Yeah, that's the CSS magic. You can just yeah. use free uh, transforms to make it like go in the back without a lot of. Uh, oh really? Maybe oh, yeah. get all George Lucas on it. Too. If you do it, I'll I'll just put it there. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put it. Uh, We'll put a I'm in. <laughs> we, we also do have the, the first two speakers here from the CRM, so if, if there are any last minute questions for, for any of our panelists, we'll, we'll let you entertain them. Uh, yes, go ahead. Hey Ed, is there a way to see trends on what's being edited? How often? Trends on oh. what's being edited? How often? Yeah, so up here at the top, that was a leading question. <laughs> There's a trends link. Okay. If you click on that, then I know this data is available in other places, and uh, so there's a nice stats uh, site for Wikipedia. There's uh, also Wiki Rage. Wiki Rage? Yes. Like Road Rage, or? Yes. <laughs> okay. The, the most <laughs> actively changed and reported pages. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. Like people fighting yeah no, on that, the that would be a cool, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll check that out. Um, but yeah, this is just a list, basically. So as the stream is going by, it just sort of, it uses Redis to kind of just tally uh, different things, and so it, it, it tallies up, uh, you know, for the day, what are the articles that have been edited the most, and then all the way down here. I, I'm really interested in what the bots are doing, so <laughs> it kind of shows you how which bots. Right now, it doesn't aggregate them by language, uh, or it, 
disaggregates them by language. So, um, but again, you can sort of click on this and then go see the uh, the bot page for it, which is kind of cool. So it's been a kind of a discovery mechanism for seeing all the bots that are doing stuff on Wikipedia. Um, is that what you were asking, Dan? Yes. <laughs> Sorry for being so heavy. Go to WikiRage. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, error. <laughs> Even PHP pissed off. When, when you get your article listed on this this web page, you really uh, really make. It. I think oh. my sequel's angry. Too. So you got the, the 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 thirty most edited pages for the last day, the the top thirty editors for the day. Oh yeah, see, this is a lot nicer. Do you go back to the past month? Uh, there. Yeah. Oh, that's the editors. Okay. Most active editors are bots, so you know. Yeah. Does it not have the, oh maybe it's my phone or something. Yeah, it was probably in my school database screen somewhere. I can see the pages. You can. Oh. Is there another question for the audience? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I've had several people ask for that. So this is actually a different application. This is from this wiki screen thing. It's basically Linkypedia, it's called, but it, it lets uh, cultural, the idea is that it lets cultural heritage organizations see what Wikipedia articles are pointing at their stuff. Um, and comments, yeah. And um, yeah, the problem that that project has is that it, um, it so, so Wikipedia, I mean, there's a lot of Wikipedia data, right? And and for me to do that, I either need to get in with a tool, I, I think I might need to get in tighter with the people in Wikipedia that run the tool server or yeah, yeah, that's part of the reason why I'm here, because I, I want to meet some of those people. But, uh, but it's a lot of data is the answer. And and so, and then basically a lot of data means it can't run on my cheap uh, server that I pay you know, $10 a month for or whatever it is. So, um, so, I mean, if you have, yeah, we should talk about it later. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, the Wikipedia editing uh, page doesn't support uh, the location function of JavaScript at all now. The Wikipedia portion of the page. What, what no, page yeah, just uh, the editing page, so we could uh, locate where the edit is coming from on a map. Oh, okay. <laughs> this would be great as well. Wait, say it again. So when you click on edit, it yeah, when you make an edit, yeah, yeah, then. JavaScript could locate uh, where the browser or the computer is running. Oh, okay, like using the Geo stuff, the HTML5, or? Yes. Or I think the guy from Italy has a uh, uh, response. Uh, I somewhat uh, looked into the, the matter because uh, actually it exists uh, already on English Wikipedia a Geo notice, which is a site notice which is uh, geolocalized. In fact, if you go on uh, geoeplookup.wikimedia.org, uh, it show it show you where um, your IP come from. It's just a string of test, uh, but it's not uh, really uh, accurate uh, for 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 uh, small countries or uh, countries like Italy, which are very narrow and long. And. Uh, um, but uh, the point is that every every using this address, uh, every IP could be could be located, and yes, the geo information could be available. Actually, now browsers have also have also um, geolocalization uh, abilities, and uh, for example, the the, the mobile application uh, uses the GPS. 
localization of, of, of the phone uh, as, inf as a, an information. So it's, uh, that data is available. But just to clarify, I mean, the, the Wikimedia Foundation has uh, very strong policies about privacy. So, so if you are a logged in user, your, your IP address is not stored on the database. Uh, so he, the, the previous remarks were only talking about the IP unlogged in edits, right? So, so the, the database does not save the IP addresses of the, of the logs, right? Except, except, except for check users, right, okay, got it. Okay, next, next comment or question. All right, well, so, so why don't we uh, give a final round of applause and thanks to our, our panelists.